Good morning, Ghana Grove. We greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. We walk by faith, not by sight. The Sunday school teacher for this morning will be none other than Coach Huge. Give him a hand. Good morning. Good morning to all in attendance, and good morning to the ones that are tuning in. Uh, I hope that everybody had a blessed week. Uh, we're all here, so that was good. It was a good week. We want to continue to pray for all the people of tragedy. Uh, of course, we have 20th anniversary of September the 11th, and there's still some people hurting even 20 years later. Uh, but we want to continue to pray for the folks in Louisiana in that area. Can, uh, pray for all people who are going through tragedies and hard hardship. Um, today's lesson uh, the subject is celebrating with enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. And of course, this is uh, 2 Samuel uh, chapter 6, 1 through 5, 14, verses 14 through 19. And in our introduction, they talk about enthusiasm. And of course, you know, King David was enthusiastic about the ark returning to Jerusalem. And we talk about dance and enthusiasm. And of course, as African Americans, We've always had a form of uh, dance, a way to express ourselves. And uh, even back in Africa, there's several tribes who have several routines and dance and the way they do things. And, uh, you know, there's uh, whatever your dance is is what your dance is, okay? It's not, nobody can't pick it for you. Uh, there are certain tribes that have certain things they do. And, and of course, uh, you know, they, they don't have names, you know, uh, but whatever your dance is, as uh, long as it's for God. And, uh, you know, we don't want to bring in the, uh, what we see today, some of our dance that uh, probably don't, <laughs> might not belong. But if, if, if that's your dance, as long as you're doing it for God, I, whether you're doing the Cupid shuffle or the electric slide, <laughs> maybe you're going to slide on down the aisle. Uh, maybe you're going to do the, the young folks to rock away if that's what you're doing. And as long as it's for God, I get, it's all right. It's okay. Okay. And we'll see. Uh, we'll talk about that later on in the lesson. Uh, you know, don't try to rain on anybody's parade. Um, but he was excited. Uh, the King David, of course, had defeated the Philistines. And, uh, you know, they had captured that ark for 20 years. It was in enemy hands. Uh, this is the most sacred relic of the Israelites. Um, and of course, the ark contains the Ten Commandments, Aaron's rod, and also a golden pot of manna. Um, you know, this is a sacred, sacred, sacred thing uh, that, uh, that was uh, very important to them. And, and King David had rid them of those pesky Philistines because they were always the thorn in their side. And uh, King David uh, brought the nation together. Now let's look at the first outline. Sing songs before the Lord. And verse 1 said, Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. 30,000. Verse 2, And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Bailey, Judah, to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwell between the cherubims. Now, 30,000, of course, you know, we, they had had problems with people uh, with this ark. So 30,000 strong. They wanted to make sure when he was moving this thing that it was going to be protected. Uh, and he had a large group of men. And it says that he gathered together all the chosen men. So these were chosen. These were special people uh, that he had chosen to on this journey to bring the ark. But his, his goal was to make sure that the ark was back in where it belongs, back in Jerusalem, in, the, in a, a sacred place, because this was a sacred relic for him. And bringing, bringing the ark, um, this, this was a, a job that was, um, you know, going to be, a, it's about nine or ten mile journey, you know, bringing the ark. But he was excited to bring this ark and get it back into the right, proper hands after the Philistine had had it for so long. And, uh, you know, they could care less about it. But, of course, the Israelites, they were very excited about this, this relic, especially King David. Verse 3, 
and said, and they set the ark of God upon a new cart, not an old cart, a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Benadad, and that was in Gibeah. And Uzza and Ohio, the sons of Abinadad, Abinadad, drove the new cart. They were kind of protectors and keepers of this this uh, relic, this this holy uh, thing. And of course, they brought it out. King David wanted to make sure that it was done the right way. Uh, it, it not not any old cart, but a new cart, because that's how important the ark was to the people. Verse 4, and they brought out it out of the house of Abinadad, which was in Gibeah, accompanied the ark of God, and Ohio went before the ark. As they brought this down, 30,000 men, as they made this journey down with this ark, very, very excited, heavily guarded, because he wanted to make sure that it, nobody got their hands on it again. Uh, and of course, you know that David was the one that defeated the giant Philistine. <laughs> you know, he he was uh, he was the guy. So people had respect for him. But his goal was to make sure that this thing came back where it should be. In verse five, and David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manners of instruments made of fir wood, even of harps, psalteries, and of timbrels, and on cornets and on cymbals. They had all of the things. They had the, they had the music. They had everything going because he wanted this to be a big celebration. Uh, I know we've all been to parades before, and, and you know when we celebrate, you know, you got music, you got drums, you got all of these things going, and and this pageantry, this this uh, celebration of bringing the art back home. Um, they had all of the things. All, all of those things are good. Sometimes we, uh, you know criticize when folks have those things but all of those things are good that's making a, as we say a joyful noise you know so all of those things in the old days you had tamarines and uh, we didn't have had an old piano we didn't have the electric uh, organs and all the things that we have but people made a joyful noise as to celebrate and, and to uh, communicate with God and, and to show their appreciation um, this this was a, a very important thing that took place during this time. And and when we talk about uh, just making a joyful noise uh, in the old days, you can hear in an old church, there were wood floors. We have nice carpet, but you can hear those folks patting their feet. You know, they were excited about, about God. You can hear them from miles away. Of course, we can't do it now because we have carpet. So, you know, we can't hear it like the old days. But... But it was a celebration coming back. And they wanted to put this ark in the protective walls. And once we got it, he knew it would be protected. It would be preserved. That no one could take this ark and, and, and do anything with it or what they wanted to do or disrespect it again. Now, between our second outline, we want to look at, and let me just give you this before we go to the second outline, dance before the Lord. Uh, of course, Uzzah, he, he, uh, the ox had stumbled and the ark looked like it was about to fall. So he went to touch it and God smiled him. He, he died. The ark is not to be touched. You know, you always see him carrying, had poles. You couldn't touch it. Uh, King David was a little confused and upset at the time because he didn't know how, how I'm supposed to get this ark. So the ark ended up staying and, uh, I think. Obadiah Edom for three months at the house of Obadiah Edom for three months. So it stopped. And for three months, he had seen how blessed he was. And of course, he decided, okay, now it's time for me to move the ark now again. Um, but even though it was, it was a good gesture because he thought the ark was going to fall. But sometime, you know, if, you know, just let God handle it. Sometime, you know, uh, so King David was a little, just a little confused about that. Well, well, you know, he was doing a good thing. You know, he was trying to catch it, but God didn't ask you to do that. God told you not to touch it, so don't touch it. You know, let let God work. I'm pretty sure God had a plan. It wasn't going to fall. Now, dance before the Lord, and we'll see here that now they're going to move this from 
over that Edom, and now it's going to come to Jerusalem. It said, and David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was girded with a linen ephod. He was dressed in his priestly garment. He was dressed, and in, 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 it didn't matter uh, if you're going to dance and be excited for the Lord. That, you know, don't worry about getting your clothes dirty or, or worry about getting some dust on it. You know, you just do what you have to do. And uh, if it's for the Lord, you don't, it, it's, uh, you know, there is no uh, set timing or there is, is uh, you know, no order. You might, you might lose your button. Okay. But that's, that's okay. That's okay. In, in the old days, you can see the folks in the church, you know, shouting for the Lord and, and they didn't care what was going on. You know, they just did what they had to do. And, you know, it's, uh, you can't shout and try to look good at the same time. And King David, you know, he was shouting. He didn't care what nobody thought about it. Uh, so that's not a planned thing. 15, so David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpets, a grand entrance, a grand entrance. As, as they come in, you know, there was lots going on. You can imagine 30,000 people and, and all of these harps and all of these instruments. I mean, it must have been a grand thing to see as, as they entered. 16, and as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michelle, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. Let's not be Michelle's. You know, we talk about our, our sometimes we talk about our other brethren, and maybe they're not as excited when they have service, but that don't mean that they're not serving God. You know, everybody has a different dance, and yours might be solemn and slow, and maybe mine might be fast and excited, but they're, I can't say that they're not excited. OK, we really have to watch that. Now, she she didn't like what she saw and, and uh, assuming that he was not uh, dancing for God, but he was he was. So we have to be careful, you know, uh, whatever, like I said, whatever your dance is or whatever your enthusiasm, uh, you know, that's your enthusiasm. Um, I, I'm I, I never, never uh, try to criticize someone's enthusiasm for God. Whether you were throwing up your fists or whether you were shaking your hands or stomping your feet or whether you cutting a flip across three pews, if that's what, if that's what you do, okay? I'm not going to criticize. I said, hey, that, that's what you do, okay? But all that dance is different. And just remember, some of us can't dance, but we can do whatever we have to do, you know, whatever your dance looks like. So let's not be Michelle. Let's make sure that we all know uh, when someone's doing it from the heart. In 17, and they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place and in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. He gave thanks for the ark being home. He, uh, he made sacrifices that this was very important. And we know that King David wanted to do more for the ark, but he he wasn't allowed to do any more. You know, King Saul, Solomon did more, okay? But that, that was his purpose. But he was very excited. We have to be enthusiastic. Be enthusiastic about God. Be enthusiastic about our faith. Because if we're not enthusiastic, nobody else will. Um, so always be enthusiastic. And every time we, we talk about, about God and every time we talk about anything dealing with the faith, we should be excited. Uh, People don't uh, tend to to listen when you're not excited. Um, and you can say, well, you ought to come to church today. You know, no, hey, you ought to come to our church because we got something going on. You know, you need to see it. You know, it, it's, it's something there for you. Be enthusiastic about it. Be enthusiastic. 18, and as soon as David had made an end of the offering, burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. Bless the people and blessing, and we'll see how he blessed the people. Um, and hopefully, and, and again, even with people doubting and not agreeing with what he was doing, um, he still did it anyway. 
okay? He still did it anyway, and we have to do the same. Uh, you don't have to agree with how I do it, but you know what? I'm still going to do it because it's not for you. It's for God, you know, and we have to keep that in mind. It's not, it's not for to please any, anybody. You know, I'm not trying to do it for you to like me or anything. I'm not trying to get your approval. The approval is from God. You know, this is all for God. And, and as we look back, in, uh, even in the days of, of slavery, and when they, uh, you know, they, they had some hardship, but they were doing what they did for God. It was all legit. You know, it was something that they wholeheartedly believed that, you know, God was hearing their cry and, and all the things they were doing in, in our ceremony. And, that, and again, the dance and you have praise teams today and all of those things, those things are, are good. Don't, don't try to out anybody's fire, you know, whatever way they're doing it, as long as it's for God. Verse 19 and he dealt and he dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men, to everyone a cake of bread, a good piece of flesh, a flagon of wine. So all the people departed, everyone to his house. Grand celebration at this this arrival of the ark. People parted with gifts from the celebration, and. Uh, and I don't think the folks even knew that they were probably going to get a gift. But, you know, he, reward, he rewarded them with the gift. And, uh, you know, whether it was getting one or not, they were, they, they were excited. They were excited. And King David was excited to, to be exuberant about getting this back. Um, and we have to be, as worshipers, we have to be ex excited. We have to be excited about the word. We have to be excited about giving God thanks and excited about anything that has to do with our faith. Be exuberant. Um, you know, don't, don't let anybody limit your enthusiasm. And again, it can be any kind of way that you want to do it. Um, you know, uh, I would love to sing like Sister Petula, but I can't. Okay, I, I, I just love, I'm jealous because, you know, I'm trying to sing going home, but I can't do it. Okay, but I'm gonna just give what I got, you know, and I can, I can, I can shout how I shout, and uh, but it's all gonna be for God. As long as it's for God, just give God your best dance, and God will accept it. You know, praise goes up, blessings come down. God is faithful. Thank you very much.
Oh, glory to somebody. We say good morning. We want to welcome to the Garden Grove Missionary Baptist Church where our senior pastor is the Reverend Dr. Rufus Copeland. We pray something will be said to where you may be encouraged and uplifted wherever you may be. We just want to welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that you continue to just be with your people, Lord. Continue to be with us, Lord. Continue to lead and guide us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we realize that we are living in perilous times, Lord. But we ask, we realize that you're here in spirit, Lord. And so, Lord, we ask that you touch the hearts and minds of your people. May our word go forward to where everyone may be touched, to where we can be better examples in, in Christ Jesus, we pray. Let every heart Say amen, 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 and give God praise. Uh, this morning our scripture reading will be coming from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 through 25, the 25th verse. That's 1 Peter, 2nd chapter, verses 21 to 25, and it reads... For even hereunto where we we are ye call, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did not who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth, who then he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not. But committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self buried our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness by whom stripes ye were healed. For ye were a sheep going astray, but, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul. God's word to God's people. We will, I will be followed by Reverend Peterson. Good morning again, Garner Grove. Good morning. Now we will worship uh, through giving. And before I do that, I want to read a couple of verses from 2 Corinthians, and it reads, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being the giver of all things. Thank you for your promises. Your promises are sure and faithful. Your word says that we will find joy in our offerings, talents, and money to meet the needs of others. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And on the board, you can see where we could drop our offerings through envelope, cash app, secure app, and sales. Amen. And now, I also have the honor of introducing our pastor. The speaker for this morning, uh, Dr. Rufus Copeland. As we all know, Dr. Rufus Copeland have a big heart for God, big heart for his family, and for people. So the, the next thing you will hear is a selection, and the next voice you hear is our pastor, Dr. Rufus Copeland. song 
He keeps on doing great things for me. He keeps on doing great things for me. Oh, he keeps on doing great things for me. If I had 10,000 tongues, I would use all of them just to praise the Lord. Oh, and if I had 10,000 hands, I would use all of them praise his name oh he keeps on doing great things for me oh lord he keeps on doing great things for me yes he keeps on doing great things for me come this morning for our communion service as well as Grandparents Day and it's been a, a week of reflection based on 911 and we come today as a way of reflection based on 2,000 years ago when Jesus died upon the cross. We uh, come to lift up prayer for those that are going through. We truly want to lift up Brother David Harris, the loss of his mother, amen, as well as uh, his his wife, uh, our very own sister Donna Barnwell Harris, uh, Renee and uh, Re Renee Boatwright and Rita Wilkins lost of their uncle. We just you in our thoughts and you in our prayers, and those that are going through, those that are needing the Lord to touch their body and s through sickness, I uh, ask that you pray for one of my brothers, Willie C, and also pray for my brother Tommy, who had surgery, 
ask you to play for Brother Norman Owens, who is in Texas, at, I mean uh, Alabama at this very hour, amen, uh, attending to three younger brothers. So uh, we just know that uh, our prayers go out to all of our senior members, uh, Mother Barnwell, Mother Toy, uh, Sister uh, Magnolia Brown, Sister Ethel Carter, as well as Sister Betty Bookers and others. Amen. And we don't want you to know that we lift you up. You, you, and you. God knows your situation. Also, those that are attending the weekend to remember marriage conference, Reverend Bowman, Reverend Stokes, amen. Thank God Reverend Peterson attended, but he's here this morning. So let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come now that you will speak to our hearts. Speak, Lord, and bless us with the blessing you see we're standing in need of. And then, Father God, we want to lift up those, Father God, who need you to draw ever so nigh. You are ever so near when you seem so far. You're right there to say, I love you. You're right there to say, you care. Throw your strong arms of protection around our loved ones. Heal the sick. Give comfort to those that need comfort and strength to those that need strengthening. May we all learn to lean upon you, and you will not let us fall. It's to your glory, Father, good. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. We bless God. We are not planning to hold you long this morning, but we just want God's will to be done. Be done. If God's will be done, everything will be all right. We invite your attention to the book that was read into your hearing. And again, I want to thank my wife, amen, uh, and all her efforts, amen, to have our grandbaby, little Sarah Elizabeth, in service this morning. And we sent out a shout out to Robin Monique, amen, for her birthday celebration today. Amen. God is good. Amen. First Peter, the second chapter. And I'd like you to begin, and if you will park at verse 24. First Peter, second chapter, verse 24. And if you have it, say amen. 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 And if you don't, write it down. Amen. You can go back later. First Peter, First Peter, second chapter, verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. We're going to stop there. And take our title, The Ultimate Sacrifice, with the theme, The Passover is the Portrait of Christ. Amen. On this week of reflection, we're always told as we come to the Lord's table, we're told to do this in remembrance of me. We're told to acknowledge his broken body and his shed blood. I think most of you know that the picture of the Passover found in Exodus 12, amen, when the Passover lamb passed over all of Egypt and Goshen, amen, that was a reason why the people were spared. Uh, Exodus 12, 14 tells us, then this day sh will be a memorial for you and ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord throughout your generation. Ye shall keep it a feast by an everlasting ordinance. And that was in the Old Testament. And this is the oldest of the feasts of the Jewish feast, the Passover. Because it, commemorate, it commemorates the protection and the provisions of God. And we who are New Testament saints believers, amen, we have this same ordinance, but it's in the form of the Lord's table. Amen. And it's not just the blood of a lamb sprinkled on the doorpost of the heart. We have the precious blood of the Lamb of God that covers us. Amen. It leads us to say, I am going to stay under the blood. Amen. My brothers and my sisters and Allow me to just get a word in for our grandparents, since this is Grandparents Day, amen. And thank God that we look back, amen, because of the wisdom that God has given all of us that are in the realm now of the grandparent stage. 
uh, I offer this thought to you that God is keeping us around for a reason. Somebody ought to say amen. God is keeping us around. If you're in the grant, God's keeping you here for a reason. Amen. And I believe that reason is to help and to encourage the next generation. Amen. Because I believe that God, want, God wants us to change their destiny. Because they're in a world, amen, where everybody is seeking success. Everybody wants the world's best that it has to offer as far as degrees and, amen, promotions. Wanting to be like the world is a risky thing. Grandparents, you need to be there, amen, to offer hope that there is a better way. Amen. You can still be young and serve God. Amen. We need you. Amen. And even though many of us, amen, as myself, amen, uh, we're not perfect fathers. We're not perfect parents. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. That we recognize that we're not perfect. Amen. But I thank God that we're still trying to figure this thing out. And we have the word of God to help us. And Jesus is that bridge. We want to share this to the next generation. Jesus is that bridge between them and God, between we and the Father. And our Heavenly Father is a perfect Father, no matter if we are still trying to get it right. And therefore, my brother and my sister, as we send our children out into this world, trying to obtain the finest of everything, let's make sure that they take the Lord with them everywhere they go amen my brother and my sister we want to help them turn life stress into strength and we can do that amen because they trust us as grandparents we've been down the road amen and we have something we can share but i tell you i ask you to do one thing amen i want to say this here in the very sincerity of my heart let's connect with them uh let's 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 connect before we correct Amen? And let's trust and listen to them before we instruct them. There's a balance there. Now, I want you to seek that delicate balance, and I'll say it again. Connect before we correct. Trust and listen to before we instruct. I believe we can pass the faith along and the legacy to the next generation. Because the kind of wisdom that I'm talking about us sharing comes only from God. Amen. This wisdom come only from God. And I stopped by to tell you this morning, my brothers and my sisters, I just believe that if we will pass this wisdom down, amen, life burdens are going to come to them, but we will help them, amen, make it through because it has come to the best of us all and God brought us through and we need to tell them what God can do. Amen. Amen. So therefore, as we look into our lesson today, we find that here we are, Jesus Christ is drawing near. He's always drawing near. I would say this, that he's drawing near in blessings or he's drawing near in judgment. So therefore, my brothers and my sisters, I'm speaking to believers this morning. If you're not a believer, amen, I'm here to tell you, my brother and sister, he's still drawing near because he's soon to return and it's time to get our business fixed. But he has already made the ultimate sacrifice so that your business can be fixed. And when Jesus returns, everything will be all right. He is soon to return and he's coming in judgment or he's coming with blessing. Therefore, my brother and my sister, as I look at our lesson this morning, I see the apostle Peter here. Peter gives a portrait of Christ, but he gives a portrait of Christian. Amen. The portrait of a Christian, amen, in the first uh, two chapters, amen, he presents the Christian, amen, and he gives, <clears throat> he presents the Christian as a pilgrim. A pilgrim is someone that is passing through. This old world is not our home, amen. We're just passing through. We're on our way home. I'm on my way home. One of these days, we're going home as a believer to live with Jesus, not only as a pilgrim, but as a living stone, as the cornerstone that helps hold this thing together. We are a chosen generation, chosen by God, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a special people, and a bond servant. Amen? Because we serve God. Not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus Christ is our example. Amen. My brother and my sister, that we may be commended of God, we must strive to be model citizens 
so that God will be honored and glorified because somebody is watching you. Amen. No matter who you are, somebody is watching you. Amen. And they they see exactly how you are holding up the bloodstained banner. Amen. And they're seeing how you are serving as a pilgrim that's passing through. Or you're trying to get all you can or can all you get. Amen. But one of the two. Amen. But somebody's watching you. A living stone. Amen. A living stone. A stone. Thank God. Amen. Most stones are dead. Most pillars are dead. But you are a living stone in the jury of God. When he make up his jury. Amen. I pray that he will choose you and I. A chosen generation. We've been chosen to represent him. We're not, we're not no more special. But we're chosen to represent him. The greatest honor that God can give you is to serve him and to serve your fellow man. Amen. Don't get tired of blessing others, my brothers and sisters. Be a blessing and show up. Amen. And have an encouraging, influencing uh, word to say. And therefore, as we move forward, amen, my brother and my sister, amen, the Passover, amen, is there for a reason. Amen. The Passover is, as we have said, the Passover is. Amen. A portrait of Jesus Christ. We find that there was a time, amen, when God got tired of the foolishness down in Egypt. I must say, I just believe that there's a lot of mean pharaohs out there. And God is tired of these mean pharaohs that won't let his people go. Amen. God is going to pull down the people that are trying to keep you from growing. Amen. And I stop by to tell you, I believe today that God is ready to step in as he did down in Egypt. Amen. There it is, the most powerful man on the planet by man. Amen. But he's no match to God. God has never met his match. And I stop by to tell you today, amen, Pharaoh, with all of his gods, amen, and with all of the gods, amen, God came in one day, amen, and one night, amen, God straightened up the show. Amen. God fixed everything. Amen. And he fixed it by just saying that I want you, amen, to obey me. Just like it was this morning in our Sunday school lesson, God said, obey me. Amen. Only the priests are supposed to handle the Ark of the Covenant. Don't you touch it. Don't you look in it. Amen. There are some things about the spirit of God, amen, my brother, my sister, God has designated, amen, we all have our roles, amen, to play in this thing, in the work of God, amen, and the priests were the only one, but you saw that, I mean, with zeal and 30,000 men, just, 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 you couldn't have got any more zeal and, and, and put in it even on a new cart, but God didn't even want it on a new cart. He wanted it born on the shoulders of men because all of these are pictures and portraits of Christ and he's not to be handled any kind of way. I don't care, I don't care how, what, 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 what you think, how you think it ought to be done. Amen. It's God's will, God's way. And if it's not God's will, God's way, somebody will have to pay. And here it is, my brother, my sister, God is going to send a death angel through, amen, the land of Goshen and Egypt. Amen. And I stop by to tell you, my brother, my sister, amen, the reason we're here this morning is, amen, we want to acknowledge why, amen, the, the, why that there were certain people who lived and certain people who died. Amen. It was not because of the nation. It was not because of being a Jew or a Gentile. I mean, it was none of the above. It was, the difference was the home where the blood of the lamb was upon the doorpost. And I'm here to tell you, that my brother and my sister, it's not because of your nationality. It's not because of anything about you, your good look. It's not because of where you live. And, I mean, it's none of that. It's not because of, I mean, who you claim to be. Amen. It's none of that. It's only where the blood is applied. And God, and God came through, and, and, and the death angel came through. It was not even the decision of the death angel, amen. It, the death angel didn't have nothing to do with this. The only thing it was was the obedience to the blood. My brother and my sister, I stopped by to tell you today, just as it was in that day, the blood of a lamb, amen, caused 
provisions and protection, amen, and the firstborn did not die, amen, in Egypt or in Goshen. But I stopped by to tell you, my brother and sister, it was not Egypt or Goshen. It was neither one of the places, amen. It was the blood. It not whether you live in West Augusta, South Augusta, it's the blood. It's not whether you attend this church or another church, it's the blood. Amen, my brother, my sister, and I stopped by to tell you this morning, he it is one who himself, amen, says here, amen, by his stripes we are healed, amen, and he bare, as it were, amen, our sins in his own body on a tree, that tree being the cross, amen. Thank God that that was a cross, and Jesus cried, hung, bled, and died right there on the cross. And I stopped by to tell you this morning that my, therefore my brother and my sister, I just believe today that the Passover is a perfect picture of Christ. Amen. But these provisions that he, that Peter brings out, these are perfect pictures of a Christian. Amen. Here you are, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Amen. I thank God for a priesthood. But the priesthood is just like the kingship. The kingship. The king was something. He was elevated. The priesthood seemingly elevated. But I thank God for the priesthood. The, the, the prophet spoke for God to the people. But the priesthood ministered to God in behalf of the people. But I thank God today that even though we have these titles, amen, it's not about titles, it's about what God has commanded. Amen. And here it is, a situation as it was in this morning, David dancing, a man with prestige, my brother and my sister. Sometimes it's good to lay your prestige down. Amen. In order to praise God, I love it, something that we learned in the seminary, amen, it was that you have to be clamorlessly foolish. You got to just be totally clamorless. Clamorlessly foolish, amen. You got to just get ugly, amen. Don't care who looking at you. And just say, for God I live, God I die. Father, I stretch my hand to thee, there is no other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, or whether shall I go? Amen, my brother, my sister. I stopped by to tell you this morning, my brother, my sister. The ultimate sacrifice has been paid. Your debt has been paid. And you pay the debt yourself when you are in Christ and you died with him. The debt has been paid. Therefore, my brother and my sister, I make my first point here today. The fact that he is our example. It says here he is a loving example. And that example means you are called. Not only that, example means a pattern to follow. Thank God for the pattern we have to follow. You don't have to be like me or no one else. Amen. If you're just following the example of Jesus. Amen. The one who thought it not robbery, equal with God, but became and put on himself and became lower than the angels and became as a man and died on the cross. My brother, my sister, I thank God you've never seen so much service in all of your life. He came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to lay down his life for his friend. Amen, my brother, my sister, no greater love than he who would lay down his life for his friend. The ultimate sacrifice and we've recognized amen all of our fallen that fell on 9-11 I thank God but my brother and my sister we move a little further there's even an ultimate sacrifice that was made way back on Calvary's cross he was not a martyr amen he didn't die amen my brother and my sister for a cause he died as a sinless sacrifice the innocent died so that the guilty might live. My brother, my sister, that's something to shout about. As guilty as sin, he died for me. He didn't deserve it. The one who deserved it is living and the one who deserved it didn't deserve it died. But he died, but I thank God, my brother, my sister, he had enough power in his hand to do something about it. He rose again on the third day. Not only is he our example, he is our substitute in his death. When he died, it satisfied all of the holy demands of God. And God, right now, amen, my brother, my sister, amen, sees you as complete and justified in his sight as a believer. If you're not a believer, why don't you run? Why don't you run to the altar? And just say, Lord, have mercy on me. Amen. I, 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 somebody said, I need a little more of Jesus. I just need Jesus. 
Amen. Thank God. Amen. He died as a savior and he died as a sinless life sacrifice. He died as a savior so that men might live. And he was a sinless sacrifice that pleased God. He said, by his stripes, we find that in Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes ye are healed. Here in Peter, by his stripes ye were healed. I stopped by to tell you this morning, my brother and my sister, amen, at the cross, believers were healed spiritually from all sin. Amen. In his death, amen, you have been healed from all sin. Well, wait a minute. You sinned yesterday, but it's covered. I love something a good brother said years ago, amen. They tried to trap him in the fact that he had did some wrong. He said, you know, I went to God yesterday and God made it known that you had a bad day, but I got it covered. How many of you have had a bad day? But God got it covered. Amen. I, I've had some bad days. In fact, I've had some good days. I've had some bad days. But when I look around, all of my good days outweigh my bad days, and I won't complain. Amen. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, I just want to close by saying, verse 25, for ye were, amen, as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your soul. All we like sheep have gone astray. Amen. I was a wandering sheep, did not love the fold, did not love my father's voice, would not be controlled. But one of these days, the father saw the sheep and the shepherd saw this child. Amen. Jesus Christ is the watchful shepherd up on high. Amen. And he's doing what he does best. Amen. He is interpreting and he's interpreting uh, our action before God and letting him know that they don't know what they're doing, but I got them covered. Amen. They are covered under my blood. He is the bishop and chief shepherd of our soul, and he is in heaven right now making intercession for the righteous. I just want to close by telling you, my brother, my sister, I've learned to try and get it right. Amen. You and I need to do this, my brother, my sister. Psalm 4610 tells us that we need to be still and know that he is God. Get quiet. Shut out the noise of this world. Get somewhere and get along with God and let God speak to you. Go to God in prayer and close your mouth. I'm learning to go to God and say nothing and let God speak to me. That's the best prayer I've ever prayed was when I went to God and let God spoke back to me. We take our grocery list, amen, and send them on, send them shopping, and send them here, and send them there. But my brother and my sister, the best thing you can do is sit, sit before God and tell God, Lord, show me what you would have me to do. And whatever you tell me that I'll do where you sin, that I will I go. Yeah. My brother and my sister, as I close, amen, I want you to know that if you don't have a quiet time for God, your mate, you are making a sad mistake. Make your home a haven of the love of God. Make the house of God, make your house of worship a haven for the love of God. If you will get along with God, God will show you how to love everybody. He'll show you how to love your mate, love your children. God will make it so, my brother and my sister, you will be engulfed with love and everywhere you go, somebody will know that you have been with Jesus. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, as I make my way to close, I close by saying, though him rather said, I know it was the blood. Yeah. Amen. I know it was the blood that saved me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood. Yeah. Therefore, my brother and my sister, I want you to know that whatever we do together, amen, as Jesus being our example, if we will just walk hand in hand, we will stand, walk hand in hand, amen, no matter what seems to divide us or what we have created that have divided us. I don't care what particular party or what brand you wear, but if we are all claiming Jesus, we need to get together and walk side by side and 
hand by hand and we can defeat and have the victory in the name of Jesus. I believe we can have victory tomorrow if we would just learn to walk hand in hand, side by side, because our God is faithful. He's more faithful than the sun that rises. He's more faithful than the moon that shines. He's more faithful than the season that comes. Spring, winter, summer, fall, God is faithful and God is so faithful today till he's already provided a way for you out of no way the ultimate sacrifice has been made Passover amen we're here today to acknowledge the Passover lamb amen the Pascal's Passover lamb was crucified on a Friday evening but my brother and my sister early one Sunday morning he got up I want you to know today he wants to get up I believe he want to get up in you he wants to get up in me we need to let him rise up and when he rise up the love of God will prevail and you will be a blessing to the generation that is here and you will be a blessing to the generations to come. You will make your house of worship a haven for the love of God. You will make your home a house and a haven for the word love of God. God wants to move in and I'm de I declare unto you, I found this out, when God moves in, he's not moving out. You may act up and act a little foolish, but when God moves in, he's not moving out. It's to the glory of God, it's for the good of all. We ask, your bless we ask his blessings upon the body of Christ this day. Will you join us now as we make ready to receive the Lord's table? Amen. As we make ready to receive the Lord's table, will you locate your elements and we'll come back and we will just do in remembrance of the Passover lamb. Far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dear For a world of lost sinners was slain. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last. brothers and my sisters we come now to acknowledge the Lord's table we're told to this do in remembrance of Christ until he come again I want to make sure that everyone has received the elements amen we ask that you receive your elements as we prepare now to this do in remembrance of the one who died and shed his blood for you and I The bread is symbolic of his broken body. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisements of our peace was upon him, but with his stripes we are healed. Let us partake and be blessed. And thank God for that healing, being a spiritual healing of our sins, and ultimately 
we'll be, we will be free of pain and sickness when our body is glorified. The cup, symbolic of the shed blood of the Lamb of God. God promised, and the promise was as good then as it is now. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Let us partake and be blessed. We want to thank God today for his protection and his provision. God has protected and God has provided. And I want you to know today, my brother, my sister, because of God's protection and because of God's predict provisions, we can declare and we can stand firm knowing that the Lord has made a way somehow. Amen. I thank God. Amen. For my pastor, I thank God for the leaders that have been in my life, and I thank God for this church and for all that you stand for and all that you do to be a blessing to the body of Christ and to those that are in this community. We bless God. Let us humble our hearts and let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, I want Father, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you for our uh, live stream audience as well as the congregation and those that are in attendance Lord we just know that you have a word on Sunday that works on Monday it works in our house it'll work in any house and Father God the church the home has come to you has come to church therefore let the church go home Lord go with us stand by and keep us protect us use us in your service somebody is watching us and Jesus is our example. Help us to follow that example all the days of our lives. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling and is able to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to him who is the all-wise God, who is our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power this day, now, henceforth, and forever. And the church of the living God said, Amen. Enjoy today's service and experience the love of God in this fellowship. See you next Sunday and have a blessed week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know the storm is passing over. Hallelujah.